Hello, I'm Kristen Shiner McGuire, Director of Percussion Studies at Nazareth College of Rochester. It's a pleasure for me to be here today and to endorse Grover Pro Percussion products. Here we have the bass drum, the symphonic model, which is fully suspended and has a full resonant sound. Uh, before you play the concert bass drum, make sure that the stops are on so the wheels are locked and it doesn't move away while you're um, doing your muffling. Uh, you should tilt it at a slight angle so you're able to use your left hand to um, muffle the drum while you play. And I have a bench here to put my foot on when I need to use my knee also to dampen the drum. We use a variety of beaters to get different articulations and then you can also control the articulation with your fingers or your hand. I have a pair of um, medium hard mallets here and they can be used for rolling or a single one can be a rather articulate mallet. I have a softer mallet that is used for longer note values with less attack, and then a pair of ultra staccato mallets that I would use for very articulate passages, which I'll show you in a while. The, uh, the main stroke comes from the arm and the wrist. Because it's a large surface, you're going to be using your larger muscle groups for most of the sounds. So the stroke may look like this without any muffling. would be for a longer note value. If I want to shorten the note value, I may come a little bit closer to the drum and snap my wrist a little more and also keep my fingers on the head. For legato playing, I would probably also go to a softer mallet and use a legato stroke, which would have less wrist. Now, where should you hit? The driest sound on any membrane of phone or drum will be in the center. This is the nodal point. So if you need a sharp, dry sound, it's easiest to get it there. And then you would also probably use a medium hard mallet as well. The general beating spot is going to be halfway between the center and the edge where you're, you're going to hear more, uh, most of the resonating tones and the uh, overtones. That would be here. And then for rolling, we're going to roll at opposite edges. The performer is in charge of controlling the articulation with his or her fingers, at least in this case. So without any fingers at all, I get a very long sound. If I want to dry up that sound, I can start with one finger and go all the way up to five. So in a given piece of music, for example, you may have quarter notes, eighth notes, half notes, whole notes. You would control that with your left hand and use the right hand to strike the, the, um, the notes themselves. To completely stop the sound at the end of a passage, you're going to put your knee on the batter head and your hand on the opposite or resonating head like this. Make sure that you're prepared to do both of those so you can completely stop the sound. If a piece of music calls for very articulate playing throughout the piece, or most of the piece at any rate, uh, it might be a good idea to tilt the bass drum a little bit more flat so you're able to use your wrists in this motion. It's much easier to do that than to spend a lot of time playing articulately like this on the side, you tend to get circles with the angle of the mallets. So if it's very articulate, I'll do two things. I'll play in the center, which is the driest place, and I'll also use very hard felt mallets and use a little bit more of my wrist.